Hello and welcome to ET Auto Smart Factory Virtual Summit, bringing continuity in crisis. We are joined by Mr. Ganesh Mani S, Director of Production, Hyundai Motor India Limited. As Director of Production, he oversees the entire passenger car and powertrain manufacturing projects for domestic and export markets at Hyundai Motor India. Hyundai is the second largest car maker and is also the largest exporter in India. It manufactures 7 lakh cars annually, exporting to over 88 countries from Chennai plant. In this session, Mr. Many would like to share his thoughts on rethinking smart manufacturing for the new normal. Over to you, Mr. Many. Good afternoon, uh, Dipanshu. Uh, thank you for inviting me to be a part of this uh, wonderful conference today. I must say that uh, today's subject is uh, very relevant and apt, primarily because, uh, you know, we all have uh, some experience of uh, managing the pandemic for few months and uh, with market looks uh, looks good though it is looking to be temporarily due to pent up demands so with a hope uh, that the demand will continue to sustain talking about continuity in operations in crisis is very apt uh, when i see uh, the entire experience of uh, what we have gone through i strongly believe that apart from the various challenges it has thrown to us, which everybody is aware, but it also forced us to think uh, various new ways of exploring new possibilities to this panacea. We could experiment a whole lot of new ways of operating, which otherwise we would not have thought about even. That's why I would like to call this as infection to inflection point. As you are aware, the point of infle inflection gives a temporary pain but in the long run, it gives a huge advantage to each one of us. Let me explain. COVID-19 is both an uncertainty and also an inflection point. In this inflection point, being a born optimistic person, I encourage all my team members to focus on inflection along with the infection as well. That would anyway bring a whole lot of new solutions to us and some of them would anyway, be, I'll be happy to share with you. I also say, when our security guards are checking our temperature at the, at the gate with the infra gun, he's all, also reminding us and demanding us innovation at gunpoint. Let me begin with a story before getting into our today's discussion. Recently, I had come across this story of bridges to nowhere, the Choluteca Bridge. The Choluteca Bridge is the one which is a suspension bridge located in Honduras and it is about 484 meters long. And the government was well aware that the bridge was likely to face an extreme weather conditions. And they built a bridge with the, with the latest technology which was available between 1996 and 98. After a few months, uh, in a hurricane Mitch, a category five storm that devastated the Caribbean came across and it deposited 75 inches of rain in four days which is equivalent to what they received in six months period, which is like huge and humongous. The hurricane damaged or destroyed most of the roads and bridges except one, yes, which is the new Chaluteka, which, is, which, which actually it stood, it ground remained unaffected. It withstood the hurricane's fury. But there was a small problem. While the bridge was intact, the road leading to it and the road leaving it were both swept away leaving no signs that there was a road once it was there. But that's not at all. Uh, the flooding forced you know, the river to change its course as well. It formed a new channel. It is no longer flowed beneath the bridge. The river flowed beside the bridge. So while the bridge was strong enough to survive the hurricane, it becomes a bridge over nothing. And that's why it got a name of bridge to nowhere. It happened 22 years ago. And uh, within a year, the, you know, the government has also built a new roads. But the lessons from the Chaluteka Bridge is more relevant for us today than ever before. Let me give a glimpse of what we talk about. The world is changing in ways we may have never imagined. And the Chaluteka Bridge is a great metaphor for what we can, you know, can actually go through it, what can happen to us in a big way. The challenge for us is that we get focused on creating the best solution to the given problem. We forget that the problem itself might change. And this is one of the finest examples which I have gone through, which I have experienced as a whole. We focus only on building a strong foundation for the bridge, 
but ignore the possibility that the river itself could change its course, what perhaps what we have seen it here. The current circumstances in which we are all living in walking testimony is to this revelation, isn't it? Who could have possibly imagined work from home, online classes would become a norm of the students who are just join a school and also work from a home from a manufacturing standpoint of view. Both are absolutely astonishingly different, but it is yet it has become possible. But here we are, the world is changing at an incredible, you know, uh, unfathomable speed. And it is just not what we are about the survival anymore. It is about surviving and making it to the top is foremost important key. Build to last might have been the popular mantra, which is yet to still, which is going to be, but build to adapt could be a way to go. So during my presentations, I'll be really uh, stressing upon how we as a whole country can actually move into that direction. Hence, when we want to build a small factory, a smart factory, uh, whether it is a small or a bigger, to have a continuity uh, sailing through in any sort of crisis, no matter how good our current solutions may be, we need to be far-sighted and focus on a larger picture as well. The course we are taking, the business what we are doing, we need to ask ourselves, where is it all going? What possible pace it can go? What are the possible charter it can go to various other conditions? We need to consider whether we'll be able to adapt if things can go wrong. In short, adaptability is the key to survival and also resilience. The only solution is what I call is a rethinking smart manufacturing for the new normal. On that note, I would like to take a ride through a new Choluteca bridge and see what we can incorporate our learnings from COVID-19 to adapt, innovate, and reach the desired destination with the help of a renewed focus on areas such as Industry 4.0 application in our manufacturing process and multiple more things we need to do it. Let's see one by one. When we talk about the maneuvering pandemic COVID-19, I would like to slightly take our journey uh, from the month of March uh, 2020, where suddenly we are to really face a, a problem of a lock, lockdown. So we are going through we are, what we have actually transferred and transformed ourselves in three important phases, which I would like to call it as a safeguard, rebuild, and redesign. Safeguard comes into the picture when the complete lockdown was there when we could not sell even a single vehicle in the month of April and to a certain extent of initial period of May. We need to really safeguard our customers, employees, vendors and dealer partners through a constant communication, which is the only way we can actually connect with the people and connect uh, with, the, the, with the goal which we wanted to go. But the, not the, no, it, it, it does not only stop in that level, the assets, the plant and machineries, we need to really make sure everything is all right. After all, organization and also the factory is a living organism. It has to be taken care of all the time. There are people who stood here, each like, uh, like the way what we have been also doing, there are millions and millions of people who did, who really stood strong to take care of the assets, plant and machinery and communication. That's one point of very important way how we really you know, safeguarded our own uh, you know, assets and the resources. In the month of May first week, when it was a time to start defying the Newton's law, how to really rebuild and restart everything, taking care of so, so much of uncertainty was the another aspect, which we call it as a rebuild as an operation. It required and still requiring assiduous preparation and a quick execution of what we are actually planning to do. We also could uh, start off with the initial humble beginning of 100 cars per day, move on, to the level of 10%, 20%, 30%. Now, I'm very happy to say that we have already reached the level of 90% plus the volume, what we were doing in the COVID period. Of course, keeping all of the our future plans in mind in a long-term perspective with pandemic effect, how to redesign our lines for the future is the third phase which we, which we like to talk about it. Let me quickly explain to this. Before that, the most important thing, that is a paradigm shift the entire, you know, uh, COVID-19 has brought in. I always, uh, you know, uh, take a metaphor of the way how Jagannath Rath Yatra, where in a great aggregation of people, systems together used to follow. And we need to execute the same thing even in 2020, but the new restrictions in mind. And that's what the paradigm shift which has happened. And that's what we call it as together, 
we can do a great things which has been transformed into let's stay alone together to achieve extraordinary things that's what your new manufacturing paradigm has completely changed which is going to stay forever in the way how we are actually trying to operate the our rebuilding operations actually started with the strategies of zero touch manufacturing as a principle and also scientifically calculating what exactly need to be followed keeping the rules and regulations of the state government and central government how we can actually rebuild our start the process in a way what things can actually go on from there we could implement as many as 7200 different changes where we can actually implement the you know zero touch manufacturing as a concept how we can actually maintain the distance between one person to other person there are certain very important you know parameters and we really need to do a study and get it implemented when we start doing this process of implementation there are times where we need to implement you know from a social distancing to the smart distancing as a concept crisis acts as a forcing mechanism to compel expeditious innovation which we already talked about innovate at gun point covid 19 lockdown and subsequent reopening has brought us a lot of great learnings out first thing is what we did was we have analyzed the feasibility of all these things together and the 140 acres of manufacturing facility we also recalibrated the use of technology to fight the covid 19 that's what i call it as step number 2 you know post covid 19 we are utilizing the technology potential for the new normal implementation of a smallest of the smallest implementation to uh, you know smart watches and also having cameras to actually confirm the persons who are whether maintaining the social distancing or not which also we have also started taking special projects in terms of you know how do we really uh, using uh, the deep learning techniques also and in order to uh, check whether the mask usage is happening or not today the rise of a deep learning is transforming many industry but so as the case of you know the covid 19 the way how we are trying to take care of it also so we are also looking on a special project related to covid 19 by using a, a you know our own sharp cameras with back end deep learning algorithm detecting the face masks which is also helping us to evaluate employees adherence to government mandates intended to fight covid 19 it's not going to be an end we like to start implementing in a much more and bigger manner so when we talk in terms of you know building and start sustaining it but that's not going to be the end of it but what is important is how we are going to redesign our process that's what our my majority of the talk is going to be having said that the post covid era the speed flexibility and accuracy which has always been a part of our manufacturing setup need to go in a twice the speed as the way how we are actually operating because it has added a new dimension to it let me give an example of the way how you know formula 1 where the pit stops happening and it has been happening for the last 70 years but uh, you know i can you guess the pit stop time which would record as you could see that in pit stop you know 50s it would take 50 seconds and pit stop in 20 you know what would be the time probably perhaps this would uh, you know would confirm in in terms of understanding about how quickly things can uh, happen as you could see that a pit change you know the crew change the tires in 4.2 times of the speed of the blink of an eye why i said is primarily the way how they trained themselves the technical team of a red bull held the pit stop in a zero gravity you had it right zero gravity over the course of a week 16 crew members attended intensive preparation with zero gravity to achieve 1.82 seconds a job has been specifically given to person he sticks to the bond with what he needs to be done and that is what you know the speed on which it has been going across how can we relate this with the smart manufacturing it really plays a very important role as you could see that you know the temperature uh, 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 monitoring all the other things becoming a fundamental uh, you know notes of it but the most important thing is how we are actually converting this into a activity so to uh, the way what you are uh, you know thinking about in terms of express vision systems high speed visions which can take 60 frames per minute and also in terms of you know how we actually use the deep learning techniques to really check whether things can go ahead or not is an important thing also usage of the offline you know programmings work from home as a techniques monitoring of machineries in an offline manner or remotely manner these are all certain things which are coming up in a big way dangerous and difficulty that used to be the 
call it the 4D concept. But the fifth dimension which has come, which is very important, where the distancing really matters a lot. In line with this present scenario, in the post-COVID era, we will experience a technological shift with the rise of artificial you know, intelligence and machine learning. It will transform the technology, society, and all industries. So it is vital that we need to include these smart automation technologies into our short, mid, and long-term strategies point of view also. If I see that you know, implementation of virtual reality application, more specifically when a person comes in, wherein a uh, you know, whole lot of churning of people keeps happening, how we are actually training them in intensive training, wherein nearby you cannot go to the people. That's where the virtual reality is going to come up in a big way. And similarly, as I explained, remote assistance and mission conditioning monitoring is going to be a very important you know, role which is going to play. Similarly, there are a whole lot of you know, preparations in terms of, in terms of digital pre-assembly and also in terms of 3D printing. All those things, technologies is going to help us preparing in parallel and future, which is going to become, you know, increasing the speed of execution of all these activities. We should not forget the way how we need to prepare for the future because we have already talked about, you know, this in what has happened in, um, you know, Honduras. Post COVID-19, I believe, you know, the industry 4.0 is has to, uh, has become more relevant than the original level of the way of what, what was happening in pre-COVID era. For the auto industry, investment in industry 4.0 should be viewed as a risk mitigation technique rather than an investment at all. Irrespective of the size and scale of operations, I believe this is going to play a very important role and well thought out strategy and roadmap this leverage of industry 4.0 is going to help us in a very big way. And I like to explain as to why. The scenario of, uh, is, is not going to be like this. Over the period of time with a strong focus of governments, various governments, especially in Indian government, we need to move on from uh, you know, a, a, a internal combustion engine to the EV, initially to a certain level of 5%, then move on to 50%. Maybe perhaps the time will come where 95% of EV also could come into picture. So are we ready for the mixed production of uh, ICE and EV also? That's question number one. And second and most important thing is also a lot of constraints on the design of the vehicle also, you know, the internal combustion engine. Whereas uh, uh, when you remove these constraints, you can either fit in to what people are used to, or you can also explore what could be done differently in future, which is electric, you know, global modular platform, which we call it as a skateboard platform. Are we tailoring our systems and procedures to really match all those things into picture is a very important thing. And we need to really prepare our lines accordingly. And also Uber and Hyundai Motors have already announced a new partnership to develop the Uber air taxis for the future, which means our line should be able to make in invariably an aeroplane also on the line. So our vision of urban air mobility will transform the concept of the urban transportation itself. Can your smart factory manage managing all these things together is the way how we are going to prepare for the future. Probably perhaps at present with an assembly uh, automation ratio of less than 10%, now the time has come to really increase the automation. Co-work with the cohorts is one such activities which is also pretty important that not only here, even in terms of, you know, whether it is body shops or paint shops or engine shop, you know, adrent implementation of uh, technology is going to become a very important way. I also feel very important, you know, you know, information in terms of technology enabled decision making is going to be the key. You know, when you have so many variab variables comes into picture, I think probably technology enabled decision making is one of the finest key. The example what we always talk about in, in Apollo you know, 4 of 1967, wherein thousands and thousands need to be operated by the astronauts. Now the crew dragon in 2020 had to really you know, play around in a very, very easy and cordial manner. So that becomes a very important and uh, you know, enabled the decisions in terms of technology environment in the shop flows as well. But having said all those informations, the most important thing is the smart employees only can make a smart factory. I am of the firm view, as like many of the other you know, uh, delegates, as well as the, the people who are watching the show, is that without the smart employees, smart factory can never be implemented. As simple as that, the one which you are seeing on the top, yeah, a camera crew, as well as the, the pilot of the helicopter, uh, might have probably lost a job, as in when the, in the drones with the camera automatically came in. So the, the matter of the, uh, you know, uh, the one which you need to really think about is, 
keep updated or else will become outdated. So that's what, you know, areas where we need to go. There is one area where I believe as an employees can do a very big job in terms of big data. In post COVID era, data will be the new basis of the competitive edge. And we are aware of this on so much of millions and millions of data of, you know, which gets generated. For example, I always call it as a treasure trowel, you know, of, of a data, which is in digitally connected software would generate 11.7 billion data points per year. Are we going to utilize all those things in, 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 in you know, connected scenario with intelligent sensors throwing so much of information, which I would call it as a data is not a new, which is a old oil. New oil is pretty cheap. Old oil was much more costly. So that's the whole reason I've written like this. It is useful only when we have the right resource to refine it, am I right? So we believe that uh, you know, by using leveraging the available machine data, by exploring various possibilities, by joining, connecting with various other you know, academic, academic uh, you know, colleges and institutes, and also using a scientific method, I believe this, there is a whole lot of you know, possibilities which is coming into picture, uh, uh, which I fondly call them as you know, data scientists on the shop floor. We have a set of pool of people who are being trained to become a data scientist who understand the machine, who also will understand the data programming, and they are the ones who are going to define the future of all of us. How can we leave the blue collar in, a, in, a, in, in this entire show of a transformational business? Mastery and boss relationship used to be with the machines have completely changed from the way how we operate from, and now there are people who are converted themselves, upgraded themselves to become a robo keepers, the technicians who are earlier were actually operating the equipments, now they are actually teaching the robots who are working under them. So that's what the changes which, which I always talk about. So having talked about the mission systems and the process and the employees, the most important thing which I believe is a smart leadership is going to be the pivotal role. Unless otherwise uh, our smart leaders are not you know, really understanding the entire aspect and gamut of the entire the way how we are transforming is, is nothing is going to be there. I'd like to bring uh, the lovely leader which recently retired. A true leader is the one which is never shy of taking risk. Taking risk should always be a part of a leader's game. That's what Mahindra Singh Dhoni said. I've also come up with one more lovely example which I've gone through. I'd like to uh, talk about it. You all know the way SpaceX created a history on May 30th, 2020, wherein the first time crew after many years have gone and safely landed back to Earth also. But the precise matter, which is that the previous day of these astronauts rode to ISS on May 29th, SpaceX Starship rocket prototype exploded during tests. On a normal circumstances, when uh, something got exploded, probably perhaps people will look out for some or the other recheck of the process postponing, but SpaceX continued to have their voyage and the astronauts on a landmark SpaceX mission boarded the ISS and come back to Earth also. The, the most, most important thing is our job has to continue and move on and what we continue to do that. So in order to do that activity, I strongly believe the leadership qualities are very important. Uh, do you have a leadership risk appetite you have with you? 10x response or speed, as a leaders, are we really moving to down to? And also remote communication capabilities. I mean, the, the time has come that their one-to-one -one communication directly is not possible. Or the leadership skills are actually attuned to that. Enhanced knowledge over the new age technologies. You know, are you, you know, are you getting acquainted with Python or programming or deep learning techniques, etc.? The shop floor manager or the plant manager or the CEOs has to get other, you know, acquainted with this, which otherwise I would believe we'll also land up in a, something called as a bridge to nowhere. We always ask a constant question when important. When was the lot last time you did something for the first time? If you have an answer to that, and if your answer to this industry 4.0 or the previous questions answer, probably perhaps we are really preparing ourselves for the best. If we don't embrace the technology, upskill with the recent technology trends, the river will move on anyway, while the bridge remains stuck in the past and it will result into a bridge to a nowhere. I'm 100% sure Indian leadership will definitely not lead into that and uh, take this country to the leaps and bounds and heights by equipping our ourselves with to the next level. The majority of us drive a car. 
The rear view mirror is very small, we all know, and typically we spend less than 5% of our driving time looking behind all of us. However, our cars have got a windshield, which is a huge, because we must have a clarity and visibility in front of us to be able to drive our car and arrive at a destination safely. The number one rule of a driving is always to keep our eyes on the road and have a clear vision through the windshield, which is very important. It's a time for us to take a reference of a learning from COVID-19 and also navigate with a new normal by giving focus on the road ahead of all of us and focus on the windshield. I think that is what, as an automotive engineer, I could also, also relate with that. I also call a manufacturing is a similar to a, a living ecosystem as like nature's nothing ever stays the same. The way we manufacture or work will also change too. Change is the only constant in this world. We should also not resist them because that only creates a stagnation in the growth. To move forward, we have to take learning from this COVID-19 crisis. So there is no standing still because time is definitely moving forward, my dear friends. To a greater or a lesser degree, we are continuously, you know, we are being changed year on year, whether it is suddenly or gradually. And COVID-19 has actually put the gear into multiplied by 10 times. So keeping that in view, let us all embrace for a smart transformation and elevate COVID challenges of 19 as an opportunity to explore unknown territory. In that note, thank you so much for patient listening to my talk. And I'll be very happy to have questions in it. Thank you so much. Over to you, Dipanshu. Thank you so much for giving such a brilliant and insightful presentation, Mr. Mani. Thank you. Dipanshu. I would like to understand in the new normal of manufacturing, what are the most likely changes to happen in the short term? Okay, uh, as you rightly said, you know, the immediate change which I foresee is that the way how we are preparing ourselves for, you know, those important things of social distancing and keeping COVID-19 pandemic effects onto this picture. The first and foremost is the non-clarity of the future. Uh, Pre-COVID era, the short term is always called as, you know, a one year, midterm or long term is converting into two years and henceforth. But I believe that short term is a month now and subsequently six months could be a long term even in this picture. So are we really able to adapt ourselves to those kind of changing scenarios is pretty important and very important things to go ahead. And secondly, are we able to connect virtually? I mean, are we quickly adapt to these kind of techniques and technologies to understand? I'll give an example the way how we operated, the way how we introduce our new models. None of our new models, uh, you know, have got delayed. It's all going as per schedule. We have already launched two post you know, COVID also. And also we're going to come up with many models in this year as well. That's primarily because the way how we adapted our members to really work from home, how we actually adapt to the digitalizations in a, in a much more easier way. The best way I believe is to you know, understand uh, this scenario and take this as an opportunity to move ahead. I believe like a short term would be of understanding a whole lot of you know, other scenarios of even the supplier and network also, how, how far we are able to quickly communicate to them, how far we are able to maneuver their systems in order, in order to match with our system is an important thing. And I believe we are going to go in a gangu about all those things. I'm 100% sure. As you rightly mentioned about your products, you had a very important product launch, Hyundai Creta, and it has done really well in, done in past. Uh, what were the key learnings from COVID-19 impact, you know, how did you cope up during this time when you had a product launch on one side and you have your deliveries and you have a huge number of orders. So there was a lot of pressure on the production. How did you cope up? Very right question. Uh, you know, being already a market leader of SUVs, it has also become a responsibility of us to really continue to maintain that lead. And Creta has been our flagship product, having done already a 500,000 vehicles already. All we had to do is to, you know, to, to really reach the customer in the best way. Exactly that's what has happened pre-COVID era. In the month of March, we launched this product and suddenly we had a you know, lockdown comes into the picture. The customers were you know, kind enough and to wait for this product to come across. The moment it got opened up, the booking of close to 50,000 numbers have come for the Creta as well as our, you know, all the other SUV products put together. And more precisely on a, uh, you know, Creta. 
So all we have to do is, you know, start working preparations on the back end. And uh, I would say that from our manufacturing setup, on a generally on a line, we have a changes of only four to five times in a month, which is also very large. But we were able to change, you know, all these model mixers up as high as 17 times in a shorter span of time. And that requires a whole lot of, you know, systemic changes, you know, from the vendor end and also to the dealer point of view and as well as in, inside the shop door. And that was possibly because our, our lines are highly flexible and also the people who are there who can manage making any kind of product in any kind of ratio. And also we were able to connect to the customers through digitally. You know, we have a special, uh, uh, you know, uh, a scheme which we started and also a new system which is called as a click to buy. As high as 100,000, you know, viewership, they could be able to see that. They are able to see all the features of the vehicles, which are very easily, and all they have to do is take up a mind and move on to our diggers and start working on that. I think there are so many other things which have come across to make sure what this product is, uh, you know, number one is all about. That was very nice to hear about. So what was the possible impact? You know, what was the impact on the shop floor and manpower? Uh, how did you manage the, all these challenges uh, all together? If we talk about on the day-to-day -day activities. You know, uh, as a whole, as a whole world, COVID has always been a mystery because we have never seen this earlier. So we have to really get prepared. And uh, thanks to government of India and the state governments, we have taken so many measures to make sure to bring back the confidence in level of people. In the beginning of the year, uh, in the period post COVID, obviously there is a fear factor which always comes into the mind of every individual members. Our first job is to make sure that when you come here, you are absolutely safe. That's point number one. That's what I said. We have done a complete survey of how a person is using his hands while coming in, while walking in, while manufacturing, going to canteen, and how he got, goes back to the uh, so we have done a study and ensured that as I talked about 7,200, many changes were implemented on the line for maintaining social distancing and all the other stuff. And uh, apart from that, we also need to have a constant education because we need to get educated ourselves to ma manage the show. That way, we were able to, you know, maneuver and uh, people are able to understand, you know, COVID and also start living along with this also. That's one of the very, very important things I would believe. But uh, the preempt of it, the, the, the area which I talked about initially, you know, the period where we need to be safeguard is a place where we really utilize this opportunity. We are also introduced to a whole lot of surveys. We were constantly talking to them what need to be done. Every day a message was going to him. What exactly need to be done as a, you know, as a, as a responsible citizen, also as a responsible employee, what we need to really do that. So people have got prepared into that level. The second portion is about the shop floor management. As I said, uh, you know, it's a living organism and uh, we, we are very happy that uh, we were able to manage the line so well that first day itself we were able to quickly, you know, start making our products and also so as the, you know, bring back the, all the systems of our, um, you know, vendor partners as well. And this were able to help us in a very quick manner and maneuvering the speed and uh, the, the requirement of the lines and the components also and also the, the vehicle which are coming out of that. The most important thing is, you know, uh, we all stay alone together to achieve the extraordinary things. That's what the mantra we always talk about. And, uh, you know, digitally, the shop floors are so well connected, the systems cannot grow, go wrong, even the kind of foolproof we have, already have systems of, uh, you know, we have as high as 12 major interconnected systems available connecting between vendors as well as uh, the shop floors, so that even things, if, uh, if someone, someone want, something go, wants to go wrong, that will never go wrong. That, those are all the things. So I just said COVID-19 has certainly fast-paced the implementation of technologies like automation and robotics. So where exactly car makers would be investing in the upgradation of plants? Okay. Uh, you know, uh, we need not start off with so much of a big investment and a big time play. It is uh, from a simple tool of 11th finger, which we, we were talking about, and introduction of a face mask detection through deep uh, learning techniques. I think there's, these are all the certain things which we can immediately give tremendous amount of uh, you know, output with a less amount of cost. That's number one. And second thing is, you know, keeping the leapfrogging is a very important thing. 
and uh, if you want to really keep uh, technologies in a forefront of uh, the way how we operate you know like a digital plant operations the time has gone from a virtual reality to the mixed reality wherein uh, the people can sit down home and also doing a using virtual reality tool as well as the actual conditions on the shop floor to merge and keep checking whether the equipments are okay all, all right or not so that overnight you can always replace so as i explained to you the robots which we introduced last week we were able to do it in less than 12 hours which otherwise it used to take one week previously so those kind of a changes in technologies which would come into picture in a you know in a very big way and apart from that you know uh, the kind of a reprioritizing the automation is going to be the very critical role you know we used to always work in those four d principle with social distancing comes into picture i think we need to really work out for an automation wherein lesser number of you know uh, in, intervention of a manual need comes into picture which otherwise would have probably taken a back seat pre covid era and the, the third and important factor which i believe is the way when we conceive the line itself from now onwards things have to go in such a big manner that we keep all those things in a in our priority manner in terms of remote uh, you know controlling possibilities remote sensors are possibility or not so that you can always stay away from the machines and still be able to operate on this all these things comes not only at a very high cost we can always have multiple mixture of methodologies to really implement and it's going to be a really exciting time for the technologies who are going to come up and the solution providers who are also going to come up with that that's what i believe the the point should really coming forward in the in the years to come okay uh one last question uh how would you define smart manufacturing in your own words okay uh you know i i as i said uh, earlier also uh it is a smart manufacturing is a is a is a manufacturing system which is driven by the smart people you know it it starts off with that note who are ever ready to adapt and also accept and also ready to experiment with themselves as well as with the systems which are in place such as computer integrated manufacturing system with high level of adaptability and ability to bring rapid amount of design changes and also digital information technologies machine to machine conversation how far we are able to you know align ourselves with the end process in our mind which is ends forth of 20 years down the line so i believe like uh, smart manufacturing or smart factory is the one where it actually it starts from the people end with the people and that's what you know i always always would like to believe smart manufacturing is all about thank you so much mr many for joining in uh, mr many would be available for question and answers put your questions in comment box thank you so much